Hey guys, got a real quick bulletin for you. Well, maybe not incredibly quick, but nevertheless, uh, NASA recently, uh, during a press conference, gave us some details as to what happened to Mobile Launch Tower 1. And also, since I made a video about the subject questioning whether or not ML1 might have suffered damage simply because NASA wasn't allowing photographs and all of that seemed to happen very abruptly. Well, I've been accused of being sensationalistic about all of this and that I'm consistently so. Okay, first of all, hello, McFly. It's the internet. If I was going to say the same things that the mainstream media says, what would be the point of me being here? So obviously I'm going to ask questions that others don't, but also a number of mainstream media organizations actually did question this situation. And this, I'm telling you, is the only damn reason that we got an in-depth and detailed report from NASA on the state of ML1 because there was so much speculation going on in the media and they wanted to put it to rest. But unfortunately, they still didn't roll it out in a thoroughly convincing manner. Now, I want to be 100% clear here. I believe that NASA is telling the truth about all this, but they could have done a better job. Hello, YouTube. I'm the Angry Astronaut coming to you from Spaceport Cornwall, standing right in front of Cosmic Girl and Launcher 1. And this is... Uh, okay, we so we're going to do a uh, quick review of here launcher, of um, this will, is what NASA had to say. This is not a very long video, and I don't and, uh, have a lot to say about it. This is the side that faces the, um, the rocket as it lifted off. You can see all the umbilicals in the retracted position. And I have to admit, we'll this thing looks way better than I thought it would here. look after the and, launch. Um, you know, they didn't have, have nearly uh, enough time to clean up any significant damage. But um, all so, of the interfaces it's in good shape, uh, or are, are <laughs> externally good shape. looks like it's the, in good uh, shape. The mobile launcher itself is uh, it has a little bit of damage to it, but it will be ready to fly um, the uh, crewed launch on Artemis II. And here we are looking down into the flame trench. Okay, a little bit of damage is a very vague thing, obviously, and also I don't think they can really thoroughly assess what kind of damage that uh, the launch tower had overall. There could be internal damage that they're simply not aware of because, once again, three different companies manufactured this and constructed it, rather, and they didn't communicate with one another. So there are many things about this tower that NASA does not completely understand. And remember, it was brand new and supposedly in perfect condition prior to the Artemis 1 launch, and it took a lot of work to get it ready. I think it's going to be no less difficult after this, but still encouraging to see the current state of the launch tower. Uh, the damage that we did see uh, pertained to uh, really just a couple of areas um, on the zero deck. If, if we could pull up the, um, the image of the uh, elevator doors, we, we did... Um, all right, so here we're seeing the image of the uh, mobile launcher deck. Uh, okay, those aren't the elevator doors, obviously. It comes out of the solid boosters. The damage to the deck was very minor, right? um, and, and actually uh, probably a lot less a minor than the damage to the launch pad of, the of Boca Chica after this the, recent uh, static fire. To, so to the, the I really think that a flame trench and a more the, uh, robust sound suppression, uh, uh, sound suppression system, water uh, system trench, out at Boca Chica uh, is not a bad photo. idea. Uh, and here you're simply seeing some of the paint, paint discolored and paint removed. This is the entire deck uh, of the mobile launcher, and you see the two tail service mast umbilicals. Okay, real quick uh, here. Look at how clean that deck is. I mean, it's ridiculously clean. There is no way in hell that's what the launch pad looked like immediately after the launch. You're going to see later on that this thing was powerful enough to blow the elevator doors off their hinges, destroy them. So if it was powerful enough to do that, it certainly knocked pieces of debris off of the launch tower as well. Less resilient things than doors, and there's no evidence of any of that in this photograph. This thing is so clean, they're probably going to be eating Thanksgiving 
getting dinner off of it. So that is a bit of a drawback. I think I would have preferred to have seen the launch pad immediately afterwards, perhaps clean up the things that are sensitive, the ITAR restricted items, and then show us the rest as opposed to just showing us a post cleanup picture. Even though, once again, I believe that NASA is being straight up with us about this, but it would have been nice if they had shown us an immediate aftermath. Helicals um, that, are, that are in the foreground on the right. Um, our, our launch director, Charlie Blackwell Thompson, says she walked into the, into the uh, tail service mast umbilicals and they were pristine inside. Uh, so all of the enclosures and, uh, and all of the uh, close-up activities. Yeah, they look um, like they're in to, really uh, good shape. Basically and that, of course, is great news. The rocket was lifting off, um, protected all the, all the hardware there. Uh, if we, there's our elevator doors. Um, the uh, elevator system is uh, not functioning right now. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we you can the see most destroyed. In, in, in the pressure, and uh, that didn't happen after most shuttle launchers. Elevators. They had to shut um, down the elevators, but they longer, didn't suffer uh, this kind of damage. The, um, the mobile launcher uh, is a very tall structure, and right now the elevators are inoperable, and we need to get those back into service. Uh, and then if we look at, at the next photo, um, I, I love this photo. Uh, when so I it saw didn't it, just damage like, wow. the doors, it damaged um, this, the elevators as well. one of the well. cameras on the Zero Deck and the mobile launcher uh, being looked at um, yeah, this from is the amazing. 274 foot level on one of the towers. So um, you can see, again, the heat of the uh, boosters um, scorching the camera. The camera uh, housing survived, but uh, it just goes to show the environment there on the, on the, on the Zero Deck. Um, is is not the friendliest when when you have the world's most powerful rocket lifting off. Um, again, that said, we did um, a thorough inspection of the mobile launcher, and it is it, it has passed. They're the only items that are noteworthy of damage. Are as the thorough as they can. The, I've I've shown you there. We did have two once again a lot of the internal systems have, um, can't really be examined to, in that kind uh, of detail this soon with, after uh, a gaseous launch. Gaseous nitrogen and gaseous, gaseous helium. And um, that in turn caused the uh, oxygen sensors on the pad to show that there were low oxygen readings until we got the uh, until we got the uh, leaks in the pneumatic lines isolated, which is why it took a little longer to gain access out of the pad. Um, in terms of uh, did we find any toxic flight items? You don't want to find flight items at the at the pad, right? Uh, in terms of did we find flight items? We found two. Uh, the first, yeah, was, this is very uh, good news here. Throat, pro throat plug material, which uh, is purposefully um, uh, expelled from the throat of each booster uh, at liftoff when when the boosters ignite, uh, and we did find yeah. that in the pad perimeter. Um, we did need a little. You're bit supposed of time to, to find that out. That is a very normal thing, finding the booster throat plug material, and then we did find one piece of the um, the. Uh, 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 RTV material from the Orion spacecraft. It is unclear whether that was actually liberated during launch or whether that was uh, released during the during the hurricane, uh, but it was found on the infield. So overall, uh, again, a very clean uh, system. Be weird the, for that uh, to have suddenly, for them systems, to have overlooked uh, that after the storm. We did have I think a it probably happened that, during the, the launch. launcher will be ready to support um, uh, Artemis II, and we had accounted for that. So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, very good news, actually. And once again, I'm very glad. Uh, thank you, NASA, for addressing this issue. I do appreciate that. Once again, I think that you could have put any sort of speculation totally to rest if you had showed the pad immediately after the launch. Again, pick up some of the sensitive stuff, but leave the rest of it there as opposed to really cleaning it up spick and span the way you did. You know, it could. There's a lot of people who may speculate that you also cleaned up anything else that might have gone wrong, any evidence of that. However, I do not believe that. I believe that NASA is more transparent than that. So I do appreciate this evidence having been shared, and I'm not going to chase this uh, rabbit anymore. Um, this this matter is settled, and we're going to see what happens um, once Artemis 2 gets ready to launch, and we'll see what the 
state of the mobile launch tower really is when we finally try to get humans off the surface of the planet. Please subscribe, guys. We're getting so close, so painfully close to 90,000 and then on to the home stretch. Also, please like and please check the description for various ways to support this content and to keep it coming because I am about to report on the first European launch ever first orbital launch from western europe a very big thing and you guys make that possible and as always stay angry about space